Many of you have been asking questions about living and traveling on the road full time with your family. In this series, we are continuing to answer those questions. Hey everybody, I'm Garrett. And I'm Carolyn. And we're Diary of a Family. And we're living life intentionally with you. Today we are going to be talking about picking an RV. Now this is very specific to each one of you, so we're just going to hit some of the main topics so you can be thinking about what rig is going to be perfect for you. And we're also going to be sharing a little bit of our experience along this process when we picked our rig. Hey everyone. Hey, this is Garrett. And Carolyn. And we are here at the Tacoma Dome. In yeah. beautiful Tacoma. In Tacoma, Washington. That's the name. And uh, what are we doing today? We're going to look at some RVs. Yeah, we're going to look at a couple of different types of RVs. Hopefully find something that may work for us, what we have planned for the future. I'm see excited what... to see what they have. Toy haulers, fifth wheels. Travel trailers. Uh, something that might work for our family. Hey, it's a great date day. Woohoo! A couple hours away from the kids. Can't beat that. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, how will we be traveling? What is it that we want to accomplish when we're on the road? Some people are wanting to just go out for six months to a year, experience as much as they can, and they need a vehicle that's easy to maneuver, easy to get into places that bigger rigs might not be able to. Also, how often are you going to travel? Are you gonna be traveling a few times a week? or are you going to be sitting still for an extended period of time? So maybe if you're going to be moving quickly, maybe you want a C class or an A class, something that is drivable, packable, very easy to go, and you don't have to hitch and unhitch. Yeah. But then, then again, maybe you'll be like us and you're sitting still in one place for a month or two or even three at a time. And detaching from your rig is a perfectly acceptable idea. Also, how many people live with you? Are you a very small family or do you need more space? After you've figured out how you want to travel with your family, next you want to pick a layout that is best suited for you. Now there are a few different factors to consider, like how many kids do you have? How you want to travel? A lot of national parks don't allow rigs that are longer than 35 feet in, so you have to think smaller. Do you want a truck and trailer set up or do you just want something drivable that you bring a tow along with it? Are you traveling across the entire country or are you staying in a localized area? Budget is another thing that you have to think about. What can you spend when you are purchasing a rig? And that will kind of limit you to what brands, uh, what sizes, what styles. So now you've narrowed it down. You're gonna buy a Super C, or you're gonna buy a 35 foot fifth wheel, or you're going to buy that bumper pull that's just maxing out your truck. Great, you found your dream setup. Now you need to walk through multiple versions of that from multiple different dealers, from multiple different companies that create these vehicles. So this is a Grand Design Reflection 312BHTS. So, bedroom. You have a uh, good size storage above and below. And then around. Closets on each side. Closets on each side. And then this one has the This one has hookups. hookups. And this is a travel trailer. I know a, a lot of people walking by kind of balked at the idea of having the bathroom um, right at the entrance, but. But uh, if you're coming in all dirty, you can say go in. Go right into the bathroom. Um, I'll just go find. Hey, hey we're on video. Is this a pull out? <laughs> They're both pull out. Two, two pull outs. So your and kitchen a... and your dining set is What's on a pull outside? out. And, and then, then this is the bunk kids. house, and this is one of the key features of all the ones we're looking at. This actually has more floor space than the Phoenix. So, I mean, overall for it, for the price, it's built really, really well. Um, yep. I love the fact that the bedroom is quite open and large, but we do have to remove the couch and put in another bed, uh, yep. uh, another pump. Yeah. You really get a feel for the overall quality of the rig. 
as well as how things are positioned with inside and outside of your rig. This is really important when you are trying to envision yourself living in that space. It's not like a house where you can just change the furniture around if it's not quite working for you. You're gonna be kind of stuck with your layout. Now remember though, that even though you've purchased this rig and you thought it was what you wanted, if in the end it doesn't work for you, you can always trade it in for a better version of what you had in mind. That's what we did. We initially started out with a Highland Ridge light that we thought was a great pick for what we were doing. But after living in it for a few months, it just wasn't what we wanted. So we ended up upgrading, trading in and upgrading to a grand design. And so far we have absolutely loved it. For us, when we were researching our mobile home on wheels, we really liked the multiple bunkhouse models. And we picked one that we felt fit our budget and would help us get out of debt, which was one of the goals that we had. We knew we were going to be selling our house so we would have a good chunk of change, but we wanted to also be completely out of debt after we were done purchasing. So we did look at lower end models, and in the end, we found the lower end models did not work quite well enough for us. The quality was just not quite there in most of those lower end RVs. Here is our pro tip for you. If a dealer or the person you are working with to sell you this RV is too pushy, just, just walk away. Walk away, walk away, just do it. There are plenty of RVs for sale and you don't need to be pressured into buying anything. Our experience was walking into a dealership and just wanting to see the rigs that they had and him automatically wanting to run our credit and then emailing and calling over and over and over again, even after we purchased a rig from someone else. It was a little much. After you have picked out the right rig for you, we recommend that you go and have the RV inspected. This is just as true for new RVs as it is for older RVs because there are many issues that arise from these RVs from water damage to improper electrical to leaks and pipes and all kinds of issues that you really don't want to have to deal with right off the bat. The money you would spend on having your RV inspected will probably save you thousands of dollars down the road of repair costs. If you are interested in finding a RV inspector in your area, we'll put a link in the description for the National RV Inspectors Association. They have a really cool inspector locator and you can find somebody that's within your area to take a look at that rig. Remember that dealerships, even though the rig is brand new, it might have sat on their lot for a while and incurred some damage to tires, undercarriage, um, anything, you name it. And when they roll off the lot from a manufacturer, they're not all that well put together and it's up to the dealership to finish up some of the things that they haven't done. You don't want to walk away with an RV that you will hate because it's a lemon. So we just finished up at the RV show. Saw a lot of trailers. Saw a lot of fifth wheels. We saw about three or four models that three or could, four or five. That could possibly be yeah. what we're looking for. Some of them were way out of our price range, yeah. but we could drink right. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing we saw that was definitely interesting was, you know, and it makes sense, the more you pay for one, the, the better the quality. Better the quality. Yeah. For entry level, you know, I just have to go with something that's not as well built as what we maybe like in the end. Yeah, but something that would functionally fit us better. If you're just tuning in to our series, make sure to go back and check out last week's video on how to homeschool your kids on the road. Link will be in the description. Make sure to tune in next week as we talk about transitioning from a house into an RV. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, live life intentionally. Bye, Bye. y'all.